82 years ago today, nine young men during the war escaping Poland, coming from the Lubavitch Yeshiva under the previous Lubavitch Rebbe, came to Montreal via Shanghai. They were in Shanghai for a couple of years during the war and were able to get visas to come to Montreal. On the very same day that they came, they opened up the Lubavitch Yeshiva here in Montreal and started to bring in students. All of the young men were not yet married, although they were of marriageable age. And they began, what is now 82 years later, a huge, thriving Chabad Lubavitch community here in Montreal. So, quite an amazing accomplishment. They came to a place there was no no real um, infrastructure for Torah observant Judaism, and uh, being that they laid the ground, did the work, brought you know many other communities, Hasidic communities and others, that they would come to Montreal and not only make it home, but make it a place that's thriving in thriving Jewish community. Welcome to Tanya Today. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kedeshi in Montreal, Canada. <laughs> it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. We conclude today the 25th letter. In this letter, there are those who opposed teachings of the Baal Shem, the founder of the Hasidic movement, and what was brought down in a book that he didn't write, but from his teachings was written, taken from what language he spoke in Yiddish and written in Hebrew, and bringing out the idea that if a Jew is praying and a heathen, idolatrous individual who is disruptive to his prayers, not because he needs directions on how to get somewhere or directions in life. No, disruptive because he doesn't like the fact that this person is praying. How do you handle it? How do you deal with it? Well, when you recognize this, he said that everything that God creates is coming from God. And this moment is created by God. What's its purpose? Is for me to understand that I have to dig deeper inside of myself. That I can pray with greater fervor. That's why this is coming my way. If I can help that person because that person's seeking help and is sincere, so you've got to help the person. But the example that the Baal Shem Tov gave was of this heathen, idolatrous uh, pagan that is, no, not seeking help, but seeking to be disruptive. So instead of talking to the person, trying to convince them of, you know, the, the, val the validity and the value of what he's doing and his prayers. No. See, look as if they're not there. And just dig deeper inside yourself, recognizing God brought this all upon you so you could dig deeper inside of you. So, this is how the Altarib explains that piece of teachings of the Baal Shem Tov. So, in the conclusion, the Altarib says, 
it, it would seem to me, alluding to the opponents of the Hasidic movement who took issue with the Baal Shem Tov's teachings, that they weren't just looking at a particular word in the statement that he made, because the translated word was um, as if God's presence is dwelling in that moment in the that pagan. Zayal Tenebe explained that it's a wrong translation by the person who translated it. It's not that the divine presence of God was dwelling and animating and giving life at that moment in an inward manner of dwelling, but it was enclosed. Enclosed in God's presence is actually hidden in that pagan to give that pagan a the, the, the life, the capability, the life force can even speak what he speaks. So they didn't take issue with the particular word, but with the whole concept. For they don't believe in the Arizal's teachings that he wrote, that's brought down in what's called Sefer al Gilgulim, the book of uh, Gilgulim, which means reincarnation, actually. Right, that says this notion that God vests himself in klipa. Now you want maybe you want to make a distinction between spiritual klipa and physical klipa. Well, can't really do that. In other words, klipa is that shell that covers over, that hides on the spark of God, that gives the evildoer the capacity to do evil, say evil, even think evil. Right. We don't create ourselves. We're given the the power from God. How? Through the via, via klipa, the shell that covers over, as we have explained previously at great length. So it's really the teachings of the Ariza that the Baal Shem Tov came to explain. I'm not here to defend the Ariza. He doesn't need defending. I'm just coming here to explain the Baal Shem Tov's teaching based on the Arizal's teaching. Now, the Arizal, who was the sort of father of modern-day Kabbalistic teachings in the 1600s in, in Tzfas, his teachings are accepted as, you know, part of Torah, part of the oral tradition that gives us a deeper understanding, Kabbalistic understanding of God in creation, God, in this case, that he enclosed himself, a spark that is hidden, concealed, just like clothes hide the person in a sense, right? Um, that <clears throat> so the spark of God is hidden within that heathen in the manner of being able to speak what they choose to speak and the Baal Shem Tov is coming to explain that based on the Arizal's teaching that in fact the divine presence the Shechina Malchus of its, Malchus as we've explained the word of God is vested in the evildoer to allow them to do the evil now says the Altar Rebbe, this, what we gave was a very lengthy explanation, you know, to have an intellectual understanding of this concept. But let us not forget that, you know, it says about the Jewish people that they're believers, children are believers. Others, we are people that have faith. We have perfect faith of what the Torah tells us. And the Torah tells us in Jeremiah, God says, do, do I not fill the heavens and the earth? So says God. Furthermore, God says, right, that God fills everything, uh, all of creation. God himself fills all the creation. So this is a simple article of faith that our ancestors have walked simply, wholly, and completely with this notion, without any understanding 
without trying to understand how is it so yes here we gave the understanding we've come to a, a deeper appreciation of it but the truth of the teachings is independent of its understanding that god fills the world well if he fills the world that means he fills also the evil person in the moment of acting of evil giving them power to do it now we went through a great lengthy explanation of how that works but whether you understand it or just take it on faith the truth is the truth the facts are the facts and so it is now it's only you know someone now is coming people are now coming try to understand but in the end, this is a premise. It's based on the Arizal's teachings. I mean, based on the premise of the Arizal's teachings. Which Yadav Rebbe says, I heard from my masters, the Baal Shem, not Baal Shem directly, but the Mizitra Magid, who is the successor of the Baal Shem Tev, and made their souls rest in Eden, says the Yadav Rebbe, they were not alive then. Right? And he's just coming to explain their teachings. However, it says the Alta Rebbe, it's impossible to clearly understand these teachings. Um, and to explain them in writing, only orally an ear that hears and understands. Um, in other words, sorry. And if a person is honest, and sincere and wants to come to understand this concept, they will indeed come to understand it, even though this is an article of faith. Um, nonetheless, yes, absolutely. So if you're seeking truth, you're seeking God, then you'll be able be capable to understanding it. And if you're just seeking, it's a pretext to put down teachings because you you know, the Alta Rebbe isn't saying this, but I'm, I'm just saying, because you come from a different tradition, then, then you won't understand it, says the Alta Rebbe. Concludes the Alta Rebbe, this 25th letter. You have now seen, he's, he's in reference to the opponents to the Hasidic movement, an explanation of a single passage from its well-known books, this is just a sample of how Hasidic teachings explains very difficult, problematic um, issues and understandings of the Torah based on the hidden wisdom of mystical Hasidic teachings. Right? This is just one example. However, let my esteemed readers not hope that I should explain everything in writing. That would be an extensive labor and that would be too difficult. But if there is one of you from that community, an appropriate individual who's outstanding in their Torah wisdom, and of course, he doesn't say this, but humble, um, I just say that, I will, will meet with them, God willing, face to face to have discussion further. And maybe, may God be with my words as I speak, and may my words of my mouth find favor. Conclusion of this letter. So in conclusion, other it says, let's discuss this. Understand it. That which has been accepted by, you know, by Jews, the teachings of the Arizal, part of the Torah wisdom, so we can discuss this. We can discuss other things. The Alter Rebbe taught many who were not part of the Hasidic movement and they became Balei Tshuva. They, they came and became Hasidim. Left the ways of, of the way they were brought up and for, for generations even. Because of the truth, the deeper truth, the paradoxical truth um, that Hasidus elaborates upon. So, 
many interesting points. Often, when you debate something, we have to be careful where we're coming from. Are we seeking the truth? Are we just seeking to um, to write my agenda, to be right? takes humility to seek truth and not seek to find how right you are because to find how right you are just makes you feel good so it's not about feeling good it's about being good and seeking good and that's what's happening in the world around us people are not interested in good and truth they're interested in feeling that I've got the truth in feeling that I am feeling good that I'm good that's human nature and that's what we see but what we need to rise is above that not just that, that I, it makes me feel good and therefore I, I seek that good but ultimately, I'm truly, I want to be good. Not to feel good. Mm. So, I had a, an instance yesterday of something that happened. And I um, did something good. And I didn't say anything about it to the person because it would have taken away something from another person there. But they perceived goodness in them when it was really my goodness. I didn't say anything. I, I, I wanted to say, like, let them know that I'm good. No, 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 no. Because then it's, I didn't do the good to be good. I did the good so I could feel good because then that person will know so then I'll feel good. Mm. So, you know, there's that strong push in us and pull to be that way, to feel good. So, you know, we might pray so we feel good. We might give charity so we feel good. We might learn Tanya right now because it makes me feel good. Rather than I'm learning and praying and giving to be good. Mm -hmm. That's a very powerful idea. Any questions? Any comments? Just to say hello to, because I didn't say hello today or the last few days. Lisa, Davida and Liba, Gilis, and Jandro. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Um, Clem, Mordechai. John, Josh, uh, J.O., I don't know if I pronounced that right, um, Manan, I don't know if I pronounce that either. Alicia. Yitzchak. Davida, shouldn't we be doing something just because it is Hashem's will, not whether it makes us feel good? Well, that's what I said, to be good. Exactly. 
Amy has a question on Instagram. What about sparking curiosity? Well, I'm not certain what you mean by that. Uh, could you elaborate on that? Andrew and Akoi and Nidisha Medela, Rachel, into Telebenta, Jennifer, Natalie, Amy, could you, um, Alice, could you uh, elaborate perhaps? And Mike, come here. You're giving it to me piecemeal, so I don't get it. To be in your community, for sure. It is with us, John. Virginia. Jan, Lori, oh. Denise, Louise. All right. All right, folks. Amazing. Israel needs our prayers, needs our learning, needs our tzedakah. I have things that I that need to be brought over to Israel for my nephew's unit in the IDF. Needs to be brought over personally, whoever's flying there. If you know somebody from New York, please uh, private message me so we could um, get those articles there to, to help, help our brothers and sisters. We are one people with one heart. What's very clear is that the soul of the Jews is on fire. And it's not on fire like the enemies of Israel. It's on, on, the enemies of Israel, the more destructive they are, the more joy they have. The more they celebrate. The more destruction, the more celebration. That's not what's happening in Israel. Now, do we need to annihilate our enemy? The enemy of, of the Jewish people? The enemy of everybody, ultimately. Absolutely has to be annihilated. Evil needs to be annihilated. But that's not where the joy and the happiness comes from. When you see soldiers that they're dancing to bring in the Shabbos, before Shabbos, and they're singing and they're dancing. When you see soldiers that speak about emuna, bitochen, about faith and trusting God to be strong. When you see the joy, and the joy is not joy that we're, you know, we're going to beat you up. The joy is the joy of living a Jewish life. That's what the joy is. Now you can have a two and a half year old child before the child's upshurnish, not even three, and gets up and, and says verses of the Torah and the soldiers say them together from the 12 sukim and that gives them life, gives them hope. Hope what? in what? The goodness of God and the goodness of our life that we live. Of course, for the cause that we're fighting against the evil, but you know, the Allies fought against the Nazis, and they had a just cause. They did it 
with they didn't do it with joy. They did it dutifully. But here you see great joy. Joy to be in duty, but joy to be a part of Am Yisrael, the Jewish people. The soul of the Jew is on fire, particularly in Israel. It is beautiful to see. Watch all those videos, the positive ones, the ones that are showing love, kindness, faith, trust in Hashem, unity amongst the people. And that is all focused to bring final redemption, annihilating the negativity and the evil of the world. And, uh, and bringing the ultimate redemption Mashiach now. Thank you all, folks. This is the message we got to share with everybody. It's a powerful message to the Jewish people for ourselves and to all of humanity. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you for Chabad, Zerich, and Gedesh, Manchuak, and it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Tanya, Rambam coming up. Tomorrow there'll be TRC. In two weeks today, it will be the JLI course on Kabbalah. You don't want to miss that. It's going to be an amazing course. Flyer information is going to go out today about it. Thank you for joining. God bless you all.